I'm Anna Webb. Welcome to A Dog's Life. Hey, Mr. Binks. You know that, yes, I'm very fond of talking about dogs in art. Well, that's why we're jumping on Zoom now to go all the way over to New York to talk to Robert Clark, who painted Molly, my first miniature bull terrier, in 2011. Robert Clark, thanks so much for coming on A Dog's Life and all the way from across the pond. Well, th well, thank you for inviting me. It's very, very kind of you. Oh, it's very silly. We've known each other for quite a, a, a long time, actually, in terms of art and dogs in art. And um, one of my most prized possessions is a portrait of Molly, my first miniature bull terrier that you you did at the very start of your kind of segue into dogs. I would say, yeah, what was that probably 2010, 11, I think. Yeah, 11, 2011, because you signed it. Yeah. yeah. And then I kind of did the A to Z uh, at the Rebecca Hossack Gallery uh, in 2012. Then we were on Alan Titmarsh in 2013. Yes, um, gosh, it's a lot, and, actually. I yeah, forgot. That's all in the last, what, 12, 13 years. So, yeah. It is amazing how quickly that has gone by. Uh, yes, that I think that's partly to do with the pandemic, don't you think? I mean, it seems like yesterday in a way. It's strange, but yes, oh god, the Tidgemarsh airing that was hilarious, wasn't it? Such good yeah. fun. You were there with an easel, and um, and there's a and live audience there and everything. There was a and live audience, but I think it was pre-recorded, and then we did two back. I think we did two back to back. It was it was weird, wasn't it? And then the green room. It was all about dog people making art from their dog hair or cardigans from the it was it was very weird I remember it being kind of one of those weird shows <laughs> oh I love doing Alan Titchmar I mean he's brilliant he's got such he a good brilliant. sense of humor but that's right and there was a lady from Wales with a big white fluffy dog and she'd be knitting sweaters and the like with the dog's animal hair, yeah. that's it so it was all about immortalizing and creating memories of your dog yes. and and that's why I think a lot of people do commission portraits from you don't you think Robert well, nine times out of 10, I think, yeah, I think people, uh, you know, I'd say 50% were posthumous. So, you know, people want to remember their dog, but kind of don't want to photograph. So they want something that's more brought to life by a painting. Um, and, you know, I, I managed to do that. Um, I don't know how. It's like magic. Sometimes I, I paint people's dogs and from a photo usually, and, and they come to life. And I'm always surprised how lifelike they are. So... Yeah, well, they are lifelike, but in your interpretation. And for me, well, yeah. yeah, that makes you a great artist because you are a proper artist, aren't you? You know, you've qualified in art. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I went to St. Martin's, I got a degree. I mean, yeah, I, that, it's funny. I was speaking to one of my old tutors the other day and she said, you found a niche. You found a, a you know, way of getting your art out there to people, um, which is true, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, but it's your style as well, I think, you know, and you do capture the personality of the dog. And, and that's what I think is really great. But the texture and the use of paint and everything, you know, it's yeah. it's properly done on canvas. Yeah. And then, all, yeah. And also the, the fact that it's kind of block colour at the back, which is kind of something that wasn't done sort of, you know, in the in the 20th century or even in the 19th century. So always a, a dog was always in a in an environment or a, a landscape or next to a horse or next to a you know nobleman. So yeah, bringing the the, the mugshot type of uh, just the dog's head, it was a specific thing. I think I kind of started, I suppose. Yeah, I know. And guess what? You know, the Wallace collection at the moment, there's an art collection called Portraits of Dogs. And for the first time, so indeed you were doing this before the Wallace collection launched this collection, but it is dogs over 300 years, but it's just the dogs in the paintings, which, you know, is, is considered quite novel. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think dog paint, when I started, there was me, I think, and Sally Muir, uh, mm. it was another great uh, artist. I mean, it was us two really that were doing people's portraits, you know, uh, people's dogs portraits. And, and then all of a sudden, like within about three or four years of us kind of head, you know, pioneering that whole 
sort of look and feel, uh, there was about 150 artists. All of a sudden, everyone was doing it. It's strange now. I kind of feel like I'm forgotten a bit. <laughs> well, the thing was, you were based in London and then you moved to New York. So tell us a bit about that and, you know, what New York's inspired in your art and well, things like that. Well, I had a lot of um, I had a lot of clients in L.A. Um, when I was in London, uh, you know, my studio was in Southwark. So, uh, you know, it was a good it was a it was a great studio, but it was very grey. And it was very sort of wet and dreary. And my studio was kind of dreary. And I was painting people's dogs. And it was like, I want to be somewhere like sunny and warm. And and then um, my wife got a job in uh, New York. And we decided to uh, go to New York. And uh, it's a whole different vibe over here. But because I'd had clients here, I kind of assumed I'd come over and you know, just be kind of, just just go straight into doing people's portraits, but that never happened. So um, it was a bit like uh, having, it was a bit like, I suppose, you know, like, it's like the Beatles broke uh, America, didn't they? But I don't think Robbie Williams did or did he? You know, it was, I, I felt like a pop star, uh, you know, a European pop star coming to America and not breaking it. So um, it's, it's taken me a while, but now I've kind of got a good, uh, a good uh, avenue into people's portraits, which is, um, it's taken a while. It's taken like seven, eight years to, to get that level of, un, you know, people understanding what it is that I do. Because a lot of people don't kind of get it here. That's that's the thing about uh, general America. They don't really kind of understand the, the, the portrait of a dog and it costing a, a certain amount of money. But, I mean, is that, do you think, because <laughs> Americans, I don't know, are more perhaps into the Andy Warhol kind of look in art rather than perhaps a bit more old school because your art, because it is done on canvas with oils and it's finished, isn't it, with a veneer? I know Molly's has got a veneer over yeah, the I top. Yeah, I stopped doing a veneer because oh. it went, <laughs> because it, because basically it aged the canvas and, and I were getting people returning the canvases and saying this is, this is this veneer. And I, I had two diff different types of varnish uh and this was right at the beginning because my whole idea originally was to make a, a, like an old master so it would be like have this brown veneer but when you initially put it on it's clear and then over time it ages like like uh, you know varnishes do but of course people didn't like that I mean someone sent me back a painting from Hong Kong that I had to sand down and redo um and it's because she didn't like the the browning. Um, so in the end, I just thought let's let's take away the browning. So now it's now they're just acrylics. So I just use acrylics on canvas, and it's super clean, super tidy. They dry quickly. They don't rub off. You can kind of wash them down. It's 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 very strange. <laughs> Gosh, so Molly's ones. I'm 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 on well, it. Lucky you. To, I know. I've got like an original. Fifty of those. Yeah, fifty of those in around about two thousand between two thousand ten and two thousand fourteen. Did about fifty of that type, and then after that, they've been acrylic ever since. So. Gosh, that's so interesting. Oh, I'm really chuffed. So I've got an extra prized possession on my mantle. Well, you it's have. Amazing. It'll be, it'll, when I die, it'll be worth an extra <laughs> ten dollars. <laughs> well, listen, so, but New York's so full of dogs, isn't it? You know, and you're in Brooklyn, which, oh, you know, is so groovy. I mean, is it quite an arty environment? I mean, where we are, Red, Red Hook's a really good environment. So it's a cool kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of art there. It's it's kind of, it's a peninsula. So you go down and it's sort of, if you know Dumbo, you know the Manhattan, uh, Manhattan Bridge and then Brooklyn Bridge. Mm. You go along that that East River, further down, you come to Red Hook. And, um, you know, it's where uh, the Queen Mary docks. It's it's all kind of, it's where all the big big ships dock down there. So it's kind of got this sort of villagey, fishing villagey feel, which is great. Uh, lots of artists there um, and lots of dog dog parks. We, we've got a park called Coffee Park. We walk the dog every day and there's some interesting dogs in there and some interesting people. But oh, there always is with, with dogs, you know. You get interesting people with, with interesting dogs, yeah. Well, I think you do, particularly in cities, I think you do. But I'm a bit biased on that. I, I'm definitely a metropolitan liver. Yeah, I moved, um, sadly, yes, to the Shire for a couple of years and came back again. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely, you know, prefer... I mean, I lived in Paris for two years, Robert, and loved it, adored the dog. it. 
I didn't live with a dog, no, because I was really young then. I was something like 24 and 25. Oh, I was sent okay. by the Paris office into the Paris. It was a huge amount of responsibility. For... You could really so... have a dog. No, no, no. But there were dogs everywhere. I mean, you could have a dog in Paris then. Everywhere was dog friendly. You know, Paris isn't renowned for being the, the city for dog poop on the pavements. But you'd go to restaurants then and, you know, you'd have the lady and then literally her poodle sat on a seat next to her, you know. And this was just amazing. And I loved it. And so I had lots of dogs and ama amazing things. I mean, once someone brought a wolf, would you believe it, onto the Ile, um, Ile Saint-Louis, because I lived on Ile de la Cité, if you know Paris. I and mean, that's why not to damage bit, yeah. yeah no so I was right in the heart I absolutely loved it I loved it but you know but then yeah in London love you know in New York I've been there only twice actually Robert you know and I loved it so but I know it's a kind of bigger beast do you think than London New York I mean it's how... a different beast it's a different beast I think uh I think London it's London. London is is just steeped in history and it's it's got nooks and crannies and you know you can walk into dog poop round a corner. Um, but you can, in New York, you can see it coming. I mean, that's maybe, maybe that's a way of looking at the difference between the pavement, because the pavements, obviously the sidewalks are like four across. You know, you can you can walk along the sidewalk. Whereas in, in, in London, you've got, it's a tiny pavements. That's what I did. The first time I really noticed from living in New York is came, coming back to London after a while, is it's so narrow to walk along the streets. The cars are really close and they're quite fast. And I kind of, you know, and in New York, you don't get that. It's you get the cars go fast, but you're way away from the cars. So when you're walking a dog, it's much easier to control a dog with a with a wider sidewalk. So not that that's particularly interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's an observation. Are oh, there still yellow cabs in New York? Yeah, there's still yellow cabs. Yeah, I mean they kind of again when when the pandemic happened, they kind of disappeared. I mean we drove through we drove through. I think one day we drove up Sixth Avenue and there was not a single car. Uh, and we were going upstate, and uh, it was uh, it was a strange. Eerie. It was it was like a film set. It was it was kind of science fiction. It was quite mad. Yeah, I bet. I saw New York on the news and, and, and you know, London was the same. I mean, just, you know, I was in tears. Just a dreadful sight that that all was. Thank goodness we're kind of through all of that. But, yeah. you know, so, yeah, so you've recently got a dog because um, way back you didn't actually have your own dog, although you've lived with dogs and you are a massive dog lover. So tell me about your dog. So she's um, she's a Jack Russell uh, poodle cross. So she's I suppose a Jackapoo, um, but I don't think she was kind of bred as a Jackapoo. She wasn't a hybrid, and we we, we kind of so the thing. So we we spent many years trying to get a rescue dog, um, and it's almost like adopting a child. You know, it is so difficult. You know, and I we'd have to send videos, and I'm a dog painter, and this is what I do, and obviously we don't have a garden. We've got a garden upstate, and we and you have to explain everything. And, and in the end, I spoke to a a, a, a deer hound breeder up in uh, Scotland. She said, "Just buy a dog. Just buy a dog. Because if you buy a dog," she said. And you don't pay a fortune and it's not a breeder's dog. You've got total control of what you can do with the dog. So we ended up buying this little uh, Jack Russell poodle uh, from a place in Coopertown, which is up really high upstate. Um, and it, we drove for six hours through this, this mist, this fog. And uh, we got there and we met the mum. It was a poodle, like a little kind of miniature poodle. And uh, the dad, who was um, like a Jack Russell smooth head, kind of long snout, more of a fox terrier kind of vibe. And uh, then we saw these little puppies and um, we ended up picking her. She's a tiny little black and white thing. And then in the car coming back, we said, what are we going to call her? And we ended up calling her Fog. Foggy. Foggy. Foggy because fog. of the fog. Fog. And also she's black and white. So, you know, black and white turns grey when you mix it together. Hey, she was not it foggy. She's just here looking at me like I'm a nutcase. <laughs> no, that's good. Oh, no, sweet. So has she got a pointy ear or a floppy ear? She is the hairiest, fluffiest. I mean, she's she kind of looks, I don't know what's going on with, she's, 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 she's fluffy. She's very fluffy. She kind of got these long curly ears. 
You're very cute. Oh, yes, you are lovely. Cute. So yeah, she sounds right. quite poodly. Is she quite more on the poodle? Maybe she's got the poodle looks, but the Jack Russell personality. Uh, I would say she's more Jack Russell um, personality and the po- Yeah, you're just right. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, she's a little bit kind of, she growls a lot, but in a kind of fun way, you know. <laughs> and she's got a bit of got got a bit of spark to it, you know, oh, a bit she's of got bravado. A spark, yes. Yeah. yeah, big personality. Spark, yeah. Yes. Oh, so Robert, we met in London when you were over last week. Yes. And when we were there, so I was, you know, thinking, gosh, I must remember to ask Robert about his latest project. Because you've got this thing, haven't you, about A to Zs. So you've got a new version of the A to Z of dogs coming out in time for Christmas, I think. We I did have chat indeed. about this I... and about a poster and about an idea that you can invite our listeners to do. Yeah, well, so so I'm currently in Montauk, um, which is kind of New York, Long Island at the end of North Long Island. This is where Jaws was filmed. Well, actually, where the book Jaws, the Peter Benchley book was written about. And we're doing two art fairs this weekend. Um, and so we've done an A to Z of this place. Um, but what happened originally with the A to Z of dogs is I did that 2012, I think. And I did... Uh, each uh, letter of the alphabet was a painting and a print. And then I was going to do a set all on one poster. So this is now, from 2012, the new poster that I'm going to do. But the dogs have changed in that time. So I am now struggling to find, you know, originally I had Airedale. You don't see Airedales anymore. We're talking about 12, 13 years ago. Airedale was a kind of, you know, it used to be an old police dog. Yeah. In the 70s. They don't, they don't, you don't use them anymore. You very rarely see Airedales. Um, Border Collies, don't see them as many, you know, but, but uh, you know, Border Terriers you see more of. You know, Corgi, uh, don't really see that many. Because saying that, there's a couple there in the park in Brooklyn. But like, you know, once you go down the list, you know, I'm thinking it's much more hybrids and labradoodles and cockapoos. And, and that's what I'm thinking of, of doing. But I'm also lo- looking for, you know, some help with the uh, the A to Z. So if anyone's up for, for helping, it would be brilliant. Um, because I would then be, and I'd have a list that would be just, you know, more than three Cs or four Cs, you know. And I'm I'm thinking, you know, What's a U? You know, uh, I know what Z, I've got a Z. There's only one Z. There's a Zukon, which is like a multipoo, you know, multipoo kind of little fluffy thing. And then a, 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 an X is a Zolo. That's a Mexican hairless. Um, so I've got those nailed. But everything else, I mean, it's up for grabs. I mean... I'm trying to think of a U as we're speaking, but I can't. I've saw my head, so silence is not good on a podcast. So a U would be really interesting to see. So basically, the idea is listeners get in touch with you, maybe copy me in or vice versa, and list some cool. suggestions of U's, but all the letters maybe, just so you get a bit of a vibe maybe of what's trending. So- well, if, yeah, if someone put their own A to Z together and I could look at it and then maybe kind of, you know, kind of put it all together. I mean, I, people could get hold of me on, on Instagram, I'm guessing. Um, that would be good, would it? I don't know. That would be good. Yeah, do it all on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, let's work on this. We need to do a post and then invite people to contribute. Yeah, we we'll do, we'll do a post because yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, so look, we can work on that because when is the A to Z? Because because all of these new A to Z dogs are going to be you know done as art, obviously, but also as a poster. As a poster, yes. So it'll be twenty eight inches by twenty inches. It'll probably want a Fabriano paper, which is the paper I've always used, like. 275 grams, very specific, but it's it's an ivory Rossipina. Uh, it's an Italian, very beautiful paper. Um, so that we probably do, uh, uh, probably not wouldn't do a limited edition. I think we'd do an open edition so that you, they would be it'd be a constant thing. You could always buy it. But that I would do the drawings probably in the next six weeks. So if people could get in touch with me in the next few weeks. Uh, then I'll do the drawings and then I'll send it to my printer. Then I'll do the the poster and then we can do another another post with the poster. 
So yeah, keep posting. Keep me posted, Robert. Okay, I'll keep you posted on the poster. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll post it. <laughs> exactly. I think people have had enough of that now. Yes. Yeah. No, Defo, Defo. I think it's very exciting because, well, I'm going to get one for Christmas presents. You know, I mean, that's it's a perfect Christmas present. I think it's a brilliant any, Christmas present. Yeah. yeah. For any dog lover and super stylish. That's guaranteed. So, you, But you're also doing an A to Z at the moment. And that's why you're not in NYC right now. You're you're in New Jersey. No, no, I mean, I'm in, I'm in New York State, oh, but I'm in Montauk, right. which is, which is like a fishing village. I think one of the, one of the, uh, I think was it Q for quaint is it's a what, what's the, what does it say? Fishing village with a drink? No, a drinking village with a fishing problem. That's their logo. <laughs> so, Gosh. Yeah. So it's 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 this this place is a, it's a very it's it's. You know the the Robert Shaw character in Jaws. Yes. It, the him he 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 used to kind of be uh, around here all the time. He was it was based on him, and he was a very miserable fisherman, and he used to kind of throw fish, bloody fish, at the kids and stuff. He was quite of a notorious, quite dark sense of humour. But um, it is yeah, it's all based on on this 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 village. But in the summer, so in in the winter, it's it's delightful it's like a fishing village it's it's probably five thousand people live here brilliant bars you know everything's off season it's in lots of snow come the summer i think i don't know over the summer like 1.5 million people descend upon it it's completely nuts here so it is a completely different animal in in the summer so we're doing an art fair here this weekend uh, and i'm actually going to be doing some live coloring so i mean if anyone's in New York or Montauk. Oh, so that's great. So yeah. just like a little historical map in A to Z of this. It's an A to Z, yeah, it's an A to Z, sorry, mm. Z <laughs> of Montauk. Um, so, you know, it's got all the, like, there's a there's a place called Ronjo, there's a Shagwon, there's all these weird named places. And it is, it's quite brilliant. And the people that kind of, we did the research with, kind of, we did this all together and, you know, they've been living here on and off for 20, 25 years, and it's changed a lot in those 25 years. But this thing that we're doing this weekend is 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 a kind of is a, it's in honor of of the great greatness of of Montauk, you know. Um, oh, that's brilliant, Robert. That's um really good. No, I'm sure it's gonna be a massive success. Well, I hope um, so. Yeah, we've sold a few already, so you know. Well, it shows your diversity, you know, so you're not just a dog portrait artist you know you are an artist that's able to paint whatever's given to you you know it's true it's true it, yes exactly. thank you you're being very kind <laughs> no, it's just it's a fact brilliant so any plans to come back to london in the run-up to christmas depending on the the way this is going possibly in october and hopefully i'll come over and pick up some posters so you know there's, um, definitely well, this your... is it. Yeah, no, we've got to find a little showcase for the posters. Yeah. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Well, Robert, and let's invite everyone to put their A to Zs of dogs together and hopefully that will work. And it's all really exciting and I'm just so pleased that you are still painting dogs. Well, I'm all, I mean, the great thing about um, painting generally is you don't retire. You know, <laughs> this is what people do when they retire. So I'm going to be painting until I die, really. So I'm very lucky in, in that respect. It's no, thank you for having me on. It's just very, um, it's strange when you don't kind of, I don't spend a lot of time talking about myself, if you know what I mean. In, in, so it's when people ask you questions, it's, it's what do you do? You know, it's, you, it's, it's, it's nice to sometimes, I'm just now remembering stuff we've done, when, you know, when I first met you, when I came on the show, you know, kind of, it's, it's quite mad, isn't it? It is mad. It is. Yeah. It's like a, a journey, you know, and it's contacts that you build and that's what it's all about. But it's it's also, I think, people that cut the mustard, really, to use a bit of an old fashioned expression. And I think it's great. You've got foggy now in your life. I so know. You've got, yeah. I mean, that's a definite bonus. It is. Yeah. She's uh, she is definitely a brilliant add to my life. Little <laughs> monkey. Oh. <laughs> well, Robert, listen, <laughs> thank you. Cheers. That's our show, Mr. Binks. What did you think? Yes, this A to Z of dogs, we must put you forward as being letter E. 
and you're right, it is time for Woof of the Week. Every dog owner should have a portrait of their dog. And there's no better artist to paint that portrait, in my opinion, than Robert Clark. Well, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please rate and review the show wherever you tune into your podcast. Thanks again, of course, to Robert Clark. And there's going to be updates on the eight set of dogs coming soon. Thanks, of course, to Mike Hansen, my producer, for all the music and production as ever. And yes, if you need to get hold of me, I'm at Anna Webb Dogs. What's that, Mr. Binks? Yes, we will be back in your feed next Sunday. So why don't you subscribe? Because it's free and it means that the podcast just comes into your feed. So it's there on Sunday morning. So subscribe now. Bye for now.